What if the way you act could change the way you feel? What if the simple act of smiling could make you happier? This isn't just wishful thinking, it's the foundation of something called the as if principle. It's a concept championed by William James and tested in modern psychology. And today, we're diving into how animation helped bring this idea to life. The as if principle is deceptively simple. Act as if you're experiencing an emotion and you'll start to feel it. Smile and you'll feel happier. Walk with confidence and you'll feel more confident. And as Richard Wiseman put it, it was the notion that if you behave as if you're experiencing a certain emotion, you experience that emotion. But how do you make a concept like that stick? That's where visual storytelling comes in. So Richard and I wanted to test something. Could animation make this idea more engaging and memorable? As he explained, the study was designed to compare two formats, one simple, one dynamic. Well, with most psychology studies, you're comparing one thing with something else. So we, we had the whiteboard animation and what do you compare it to? And it seemed to me that a talking head was the most obvious thing because that was normally uh, what you're up against in terms of alternatives on, on YouTube. So to keep it authentic, Richard recorded a short piece about the as if principle, explaining its history and applications. It was, just, it was just me talking pretty much off the top of my head. I knew there had to be facts in there because when you come to testing people's memory, you want, you know, what year did blah, 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 or whatever. So I knew they had to be in there. I think we had four facts in there. Um, but otherwise, I wanted it um, to be quite, yeah, a, a real world test. Um, so the results were surprising, even to us. Richard describes them this way. If you look across those four questions about the, the information in the video, roughly you get a 15% uplift in, in people remembering information. When you look at how entertaining you find it, roughly you get a 30% uplift. And the key one, and I guess for me the most surprising one, when you ask that question, how likely are you to share with friends and family, you get about a 60% uplift. So you've got the same audio, you've got the same um, content in that sense, but the visual differences between a talking head and a, a whiteboard animation are leading to huge differences in how people encounter and deal with that material. So why does this work? Because animation doesn't just present information, it transforms it into an experience. Richard also highlighted the psychological mechanics at play, particularly the idea of dual coding. Yeah, so, so with the dual coding idea, you have, well, information being delivered via two channels. One is, I'm telling you about it. So I might say, if you draw a capital Q on your forehead, it tells you something about yourself, the, whether you put the tail over your left or right eye. So that's one channel, you hear, hear my voice. And then you folks bring it alive. Uh, and that's the second channel, that's dual coding. So what's lovely here is that it isn't just a talking head where you, the visuals uh, really, basically you could cut me out and it wouldn't make much difference. You make the visuals very important. It means you can emphasize certain information. If I say, oh, extroverts enjoy doing this sort of thing, you can suddenly make those extroverts go skydiving or go to a party or whatever it is in a way that I, I just can't do that when I'm just being a talking head. This isn't just about memory, it's about emotion. As Richard said, you have the emotional reaction to it. Much as we like to think we're hard-headed and that we just share stuff that's got good information content, the fact is we know that how we feel and how we want other people to feel is really important. So the fact that it got, you know, it's more entertaining, more interesting, more fascinating and so on, means that it's having an emotional impact. And fundamentally, we are emotional creatures. But perhaps the most unexpected finding was the shareability. Here's how Richard described it. You're saying, I find this interesting. Do you? Well, if other people go, no, this is terrible, then it reflects badly on you. So shareability is a social construct where you're, you're telling people, this is who you are, and you've got to get it right. So you need material which should look smart or entertaining or interesting, and that's what you've got with the whiteboard animations. And it's this social connection that helps ideas like the as if principle spread. So what does this tell us? that the way we deliver information changes how it's received. And as Richard said, that you can give people something that they can use in their everyday lives, and hopefully then for some of those people, it becomes a motivating factor to find out more. It's a gateway 
uh, into uh, all that and books and the papers that are out there. And that's what, you know, good communicators do. You forget it isn't just about the ideas you're giving people, you're making them more curious to find out more. And, and I think the whiteboard animations do that brilliantly. So the As If Principle is about action creating emotion. And animation is the perfect medium for showing that in action, bringing ideas to life, making them stick, and sharing them with the world. So next time you're feeling stuck, try this. Smile, walk confidently, and act as if. And when you're ready to share the big idea, consider how you present it. Because the way we act and the way we show shapes the way we feel. Remember and connect. Why not download our ebook about this study? Or if you want to find out how to make your comms more entertaining, engaging, and shareable, then visit our website. The link is in the description.